G'day to you. This video has been recorded live on Facebook. So if you're catching this part, you're watching a replay. I want you to type in the number two so that we know who we're working with and so we can tailor the content. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave us a comment and let us know, um, you know, where you're tuning in from. So today we're going to be talking about how to stop seeking validation from people that don't understand you as a business person and how entrepreneurship is not um, a permission-based uh, business to have. you got to be your own cheerleader. Now, I see the uh, lunch people are in. Let me introduce them to the show and then we can get this started. Julie Ann, thank you so much for tuning in. I see Scott Woodrow is in the house as well. Steven Seden, my man, how are you doing? And Robert, Robert, thank you so much for the unparalleled support. Julie, yesterday, I'm really happy you took the advice and you went on and did something remarkable um, with what we talked about. So it really, you know, makes this enjoyable for us. And those that are just pretty much starting, oh, I see Stacy A. Cross is in the house. Stacy with no A. <laughs> you guys should ch uh, check out uh, Stacy. She basically helps people to get uncomfortable within their business. Kudos to you, my love, for being and sticking to your guns regarding what it is that you do. So today we're talking about how you should stop seeking validation. First of all, from people that don't understand what you're doing. And second of all, from people that don't actually get um, where you had it and people that don't really, really understand who you are as a person and how you can possibly help them. All right. So the reason why I do this every single day is because I believe that your business should be profitable and enjoyable. And I also believe that if you're going to be an online business person, you should be able to create for and relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. So that's the reason why I simply teach a four-step system every single day. I pick up something from this blueprint that we can talk about or something that is happening within our business. So you're guaranteed the, um, the, the information that I'm giving out is actually um, tested on humans. Okay, it's not tested on animals or it's not based on some data or some hearsay. All right. The reason why we do this is because I lead a team um, of digital marketing experts um, that are just hell bent to make your business grow essentially through digital marketing strategies. And we will help you curate, um, you know, your online footprint and also optimize your business for, um, you know, business growth. This would help you get more leads, uh, more revenue, and you'll be earning more money with less struggle. For those that really know how this show operates, they know that I really want to inspire you to do things that inspire you. And all that you can do is all that you can do. All right. So obviously we are going into week number four of 2018. Congratulations. You've stood the test of time. Um, you know, your business is going strong. I'm supposing you're starting to see, you know, efforts or benefits or a bit of profit with what you've been doing, your social media efforts, um, you know, a bit of revenue coming in, et cetera, et cetera. Whichever way um, you celebrate the successes in your businesses, that is up to you. All right. Now I'm telling you, don't let nobody take you off the rails. Don't let anybody else tell you um, that what you're doing is is is. It's pretty much probably not going to work. The reason being people, people that do that are usually tire kickers. They're usually people not going to pay you in the first place. And people that do that are people that are afraid, um, you know, you will succeed. And then they have to look at you in a different light. All right. So I'm going to be sort of pulling the curtain a little bit. I mean, some people really need to hear this because as an entrepreneur, um, half of the time, the things that we go out to seek is not people's opinions, but other people's validation. You know why? We're human, all right? We're going to need to find out, are we, um, you know, going the right path? Are we actually doing the right thing? You know what I mean? So that's the reason why we congregate in groups. That's the reason why we end up buying courses we never use, just so that we belong, just so that we feel like we are part of the system, just so that we feel like we are part of something. But... Are you actually taking good care of the star player? Are you paying attention to your actual cheerleader? 
Because entrepreneurship is not for people who are going to be needing permissions for, from, permission from others to begin their journey. If that's you, then maybe you might get off this video right now because what I'm going to be talking about is probably going to offend you. And guess what? I don't care. All right. At the end of the day, there's one of those things that we now live in a global village. You can pick and choose who can follow you. You can pick and choose who can listen to your, your content. You can pick and choose who you want to transact with. All right. If you haven't gotten to a stage where you fire your customers, you fire your advisors, you fire your coaches, then maybe you really need to sit down and see, do you actually stand for anything? Because if you don't stand for anything, if your values are easily tainted by somebody else's opinion, somebody else's um, emoji online, then you might fall for anything. All right. So I see EJ has just tuned in. Paul Carroll, thank you so much for tuning in. And Brian Machaira, it was so perfect speaking to you a little bit earlier on. And I think some of the things that I'm going to be talking about on this video can and will relate to our situation and our conversation in the morning. All right. So don't think that this episode is about you. It's not at all. I think. <laughs> all right. So as an entrepreneur, you know, you, you started your business to create freedom in your life, um, you know, to gain control of your time. Can you just type in the comments there? Why did you start your business? What was the reason that prompted you to start your business? Because some people started so that they could get financial security. Some people started because they didn't, they were not comfortable anymore within, you know, their, their means of earning or they, you know, they were sick and tired of being sick and tired. That thing that got you started, your friends, your mother, your father, your spouse was not there when that pain struck you. So why are you going to let them decide how you're going to continue within your business? Well, unless you've borrowed money from them. All right. Um, you know, I, 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 for one, know that I started because I wanted financial security for my family. I wanted to enjoy life without even worrying about money. You know, and, um, you know, as, as, um, as you start making these moves within um, entrepreneurship, the power moves, maybe um, you start partnering with people that, um, you know, your audience does not really like, or you, you start partnering with people that your, your, your parents or your family thinks, um, you know, they're going to be detrimental to your success. Well, figure out, do you really need their opinion? Where are they or what have they done that actually, um, you know, can constitute that their advice is valuable? All right. And Nicole Sander says, oh, my God, it's been ages. Of course, I've been missing you, love. Hope 2018 is treating you fantastic. All right. So, you know, you might be part of a mastermind. You might have joined a group online, um, you know, where you have other entrepreneurs in your life or every single day um, where tall poppy syndrome is rife. You know what I mean? And, and um, you know, you might be part of all those groups where you're just listening to the one person and it's, it's a top down, um, you know, monopoly type thing where you're just listening to that guy just because he's he got results two years ago and he can't replicate those results up until he sells you something, you know, or you might tell your family about the things that you're doing. And you know what? I understand there's, there's value in communicating your, your ideas and wisdom and, and having different perspectives from people. But I think there's more that we're looking for and yearning for than just having people around us. And you might be looking for something without even realizing it, you know, you know, when, when, when people start advising you or they start giving you whatever opinions that they have, they might be not what you expected. And then you get disappointed. And guess what? That disappointment turns into anger. That disappointment turns into depression. I've met a lot of entrepreneurs that are depressed, you know, and then you start losing momentum and motivation. And the main reason for that, you know, disappointment and, and more things that might start affecting you is that you were really seeking outside validation. And I'm going to say that it's not people's opinions that it is. You were really seeking outside validation, you know, and Steve says, use your own gut instinct and just go for it. Absolutely. You know, what you were seeking for is looking for permission and reassurance to do the things that you believe are right for you and your business. And that is dangerous. 
Because nobody's going to vouch for your own success. Nobody's going to root for your own success except you. Everybody else will do things that are in their own favor. Because if you get successful, that means we won't have time with you. We won't be drinking beers with you. And we won't be hanging out with you at festivals. So stay around with us. Common folk. So that's why we will advise you. Now that idea is not going to work. Two months later, somebody comes up with, with an Uber idea. And you're like, oh my God, I was thinking about that. You guys let me down. But they're going to be sitting there and be like, oh, you should have done it. It's your choice. You didn't. So when outside validation doesn't come, most of the times we don't know how to explain it. And we turn our emotions into feelings that then, you know, make you lose momentum. And they will affect you in a very negative way. So choose your influences. Choose who you are listening to and if that person actually has the results that you want to get to or you yearn to, that is how you then, you know, make, make you know, informed decisions based on what other people are saying. You really, really need to understand that seeking outside validation is, is the detriment of your business right now. And you know what outside validation can come in the, in the form of? Outside validation can come in the form of trying to convince people that are never going to buy from you anyway to buy from you. And then when they don't buy, you feel like maybe your product is inadequate. You feel like maybe, um, you know, your, your service is not good enough. But did you ask in the first place the people that you're trying to sell to? Do they actually have the moolah to buy those services from you? You see, because we, we don't get these things. Nobody gives us the feedback to say... You know what, Prosper, I'm sorry I can't continue with your service because I'm broke. I'm sorry I, I just started my business because they also want to feel important. You know, and what uh, Steve says, don't be a people pleaser. Well, absolutely. You know, some markets, we all know these markets, um, they are filled with people that have no money at all. You know, and sometimes the market itself is just defined by a herd of moneyless people. You know, it could be a niche for people that enjoy Star Wars figurines. It could be a niche for people that enjoy uh, dressing up as emojis. You know what I mean? But are these people going to pay you anything or any money? I don't think so. You know, I don't think so. So that doesn't mean your product is, is any less. It's just that the people you're trying to reach out to have no money. So you, you need to know ahead of time that it's going to be tricky to get blood out of these stones that you're trying to convert. So maybe that's not the validation you're after. People who do have money, let me tell you something. People that actually have the money are way easier to sell to. So stop chasing waterfalls and stop chasing people that will give you a wrong sense of validation about your business just because they cannot afford to pay you. All right? So you should be... You know, I, I don't know, you, you really don't have to depend on anybody else for that emotional support, uh, mental support and entrepreneurial strength. Because once you start selling things to people and they can't afford it, you feel like you've lost, you know. And Scott says it's near impossible to change people's minds because nobody wants to ever be thought to be wrong, um, you know, in, in their way of thinking. All right, so at the end of the day, if you're trying to change people's minds, what you're literally telling them is you're wrong and I'm right. And good luck with trying to change people's ideas. So Scott, thank you so much, um, you know, for that, for that input there. Now, Robert says, ha, ha, I love that. So true, you can't get blood from a stone. Oh, for sure. So if people don't have money in your niche, don't let that be, um, you know, validation of your business idea not working. You know, and Nicole says, hang around the right tribe. Absolutely. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit um, later on because you are an average of the five people you hang around with. So if the people that you're hanging around are not moving you forward, are not egging you on or are not helping you, if they're dragging you down, then what's the point in hanging out with them to make yourself feel better? But is that going to help you when you're sitting in your office or in your place of working crying just because things are not working? You have to be your own biggest cheerleader. You have to be the, the, the chief coordinator of your, of your fan club. You have to be the one person who fully appreciates how amazing um, you, you actually are. Because 
you be disappointed 100% of the time if you depend on somebody else to validate who you are, your mental, your, your, your emotional strength? I mean, like what Nicole says, you're going to need supportive people in your life, but the real strength comes from within you. And it starts with you, yourself, owning it and owning the whole idea of who you've become. Because let me tell you something, this whole entrepreneurship thing did not just start in the last 10 years. It's been there since the 300 BC. Even Jesus had to throw away people that were trading in the, in the, in the, in the synagogue, didn't he? So it did not start with us. People just got afraid of leaping. So they also don't want you to jump across. And when you start understanding and implementing self-love, your, your, your confidence and you know your positive self-image, you will be a natural stronger person that actually leads you and your team or your, your audience and you become a really strong entrepreneur because people are seeking leaders. If you are going to go out and seek validation from people that are not going to help you, you know what? It shows your weakness. And people are going to see through that. You know? And you will stop looking for... If, if you've got the inner strength to carry yourself through, you will automatically stop looking for it in other people. And then most of the time, it's usually the wrong people that we seek validation from in the first place. Caroline, how are you doing? Happy New Year. Hey, and tell me, when is our video going to be ready? I haven't seen anything on the internet. Or just tag me if it's ready. So when you start with strength, inner strength, you can build upon it, you know? Because you don't have to borrow it from other people. What would happen when they're not there if you're hanging on to other people for emotional strength? I know this is not easy to hear, but at the end of the day, you will notice that you will need to be yourself more than anything else. And Scott says... 2018 is the year to clear out toxi toxicity. Absolutely. Get rid of the gunk. Get rid of the rubbish. You know? You become a strong leader. You know? And guess what? You're here to live. You're here to learn. And you're here to contribute. But you can't learn from... And, and we all learn from mistakes. But you can't only just learn from what you've gone through. So, at the end of the day, when you're learning from mistakes, you use them as motivation. To become better. How else are you going to learn if you don't fail at something? How else are you going to learn if you don't make a mistake? Because if you're going to try and be too perfect, guess what happens? You're not going to ship. You're not going to put out anything. You won't put out content just because you're afraid people are not going to watch your live video. You're not going to put out a blog. And guess what? Out of sight, out of mind. So stop seeking validation from people that are not going to pay you in the first place. You know, remember when I asked, when I started this video, why did you start this business? You didn't start this business just because somebody convinced you that you should, you know. You started this business because you knew, you saw a gap in the market and you knew your personal skill, your personal strength, charisma would help to fill it up. And you started this to make an impact while you're actually just generating income for yourself. Like what other people are saying right there. So you didn't start this business to seek outside validation. Why would you seek for it now? So it doesn't, you don't need it for, 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 for you to have a sense of growth in your business. You know? Your main reason for having started should be the fuel for your growth, should be the fuel for your motivation, should be your own inspiration. Not the opinion of others. People that don't even see the bigger picture. They don't know what you can see. If they could see what you can see, they would have started that business. But they're not you. You're not them. So if you've been seeking outside validation, it's really time now to, 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 to reconnect with why you actually started your business. Because then you might figure out that you, you probably don't need to be doing it all. You need to be doing it a whole lot more. What are you serving? Who are you serving? And who needs you? It's really, really time to start understanding that validation from others does not put money into your bank account or bring new customers in. You know? You know, showing potential um, leads or potential customers 
a lot of value of what you provide, that's how it all comes to you. So you have to burn the boats, just go in there and don't seek anybody else's approval. Because you know what? Most people in your life, they're not going to get it anyways. They are not going to understand why you are putting yourself through all this and you've got nothing to show for it yet. You know? Because most, most people in your life are not going to get it. Most people that are around you right now are probably waking up and going to some sort of a job. But guess what? Entrepreneurship has been around since the beginning of time. I spoke about this a little bit earlier on. Yet most people in, in your life, they won't even understand why you're putting yourself through that in order for you to do the hard things now and then enjoy later. For some people, they, they don't see that. So don't let the opinions of other people become your own reality. But maybe sometimes they're true. So it's, it's just a way of seeing it, you know. Because we've been taught a life that should go through in a certain way, you know. But entrepreneurship challenges the status quo. You're breaking from the mold. You're doing the opposite of what everybody's meant to be doing. So even if you tell people exactly what you're going to be doing and what re amazing results you're going to be getting, there will be some confusion. So like what um, Nicole said earlier on, be around the people that are going the same direction as you. Because if you start seeking validation from people who don't understand, that then becomes a recipe for disaster. You can't take advice from others who don't, um, you know, who are not emotionally invested in their, um, you know, um, future. And just trust your own decisions. Trust the decisions that you're making because at the end of the day, you should own those decisions. This is your life. This is your business. You know, you're the one that's going to live with the consequences that um, you've made right now. So own them. Because if you're going to be listening to other people, they're not going to be around for you to blame them. So why not own that part? And Christine says, I like that. Be your own cheerleader. Absolutely. You, you're going to have people that are just going to want to see the end results. They're not going to want to care about, you know, the hardship you're going through. Or sometimes some people feel like they're feeling sorry for you while they're actually, you know, taking you the wrong direction. You're the one that has to make it through. Um, and, 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 and when everything feels like it's all falling apart, stand in there and say, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I own this. Because every entrepreneur experiences these moments. It's not always going to be Ferraris, um, Airbnbs, you know, hotels and all that stuff. You know? If you go through hard times alone, you shouldn't let the, you know, the outside validation detect whether, um, whether or not it's time to have the good times. You know? So you want to build strength within yourself, confidence within yourself, and use all the good advice to complement what you're doing and not to detect it. You are your own cheerleader. Because half of the people that we're seeking validation from they're probably not going to pay us anyway. So you want to surround yourself with entrepreneurs and people that will actually give you honest advice and they have been where you want to be, not people that are full of judgment because of their own personal experience or preferences. So you want to filter that advice and figure out, is this going towards um, you know, um, you know, your goals? Is it helping you by actually helping you? Good day, Nicole. Hope you're having a fantastic day there. All right? Validate yourself. That's all you need. Validate yourself. Because no one is going to be sitting around and waiting while you're burning all the midnight oil. All they just want to see is results. And if you don't show up with results, it will be hard. G'day Vivian, hope you're having a fantastic uh, day right there. So how are the people that might be the culprits of, you know, not, not giving you validation is maybe the audience that you're going for, they, they don't quite have the problem or the pain that you're trying to f solve for them. 
You know, they, the experienced marketers that call it the bleeding neck. Find out, am I actually solving a problem? Am I really, really needed in the market? Because a bleeding neck is, is, is a dire sense of urgency. It means somebody has an immediate problem that has demands that needs to be solved right now. Not tomorrow, not next year, not looking around. They need your services right now. Are you in a position to take those people on? Or are we busy chasing the people that are, oh, we're just looking around and window shopping. If you really, really want to make big bucks, if you really, really want to make it as an entrepreneur, your product has to deal with something that involves a pain, right? And great inconvenience. Are you helping people recuperate their loss of money? Is there a threat to their life? Is there a loss to maybe something that they, they really, really care about? Because if you're just fulfilling a need that's not needed, all of that will give you feedback. And guess what? People will choose to purchase things that are a need than a want. So figure out, are you actually solving a big pain? And are you offering big pleasure after that? Stuff that really, really hits close to, to home for people. If people are continuously hemorrhaging money and your product can fix that, then that's the validation you need. Serious money is always found in places where people are desperate and people really, really need a solution yesterday. So if you want the check tomorrow, the problem needs to be today. Urgently. That's how you figure out, am I really needed? And so that you don't go seeking validation from people that are not going to purchase from you anyway. Sometimes we go and chase people that haven't even bought into our USP or our unique selling proposition. Because if you're just going to go to the market with a question, um, hey, do you want to buy this? What's in it for the customer? What is the big benefit that your customer is going to buy into? What story are they buying off of you? So don't seek validation from people that haven't bought into your story. You know, what kind of deal would they be snatching up for you that very moment? What benefit are they getting from you, which... Anybody else on the market is not promising. Because if you keep going to sell to people that are never going to buy from you anyway, that will hit on your self-esteem. So if you have a unique selling proposition, it's, it's that unique differentiation of what does your product do that nobody else does? Do you actually know what it does? What your product actually does that nobody else on the market does? Do you actually know who the people are going to be paying for? You know, the customers. What do they buy from you instead of purchasing it from anybody else? And after that, what guarantee can you make that nobody else can make? Once you've got all those questions in the market and people actually know what to expect from you, you're not going to be getting any tire kickers. And people will actually know that you stand for something. Because your unique selling proposition is hugely important. And if you don't have anything that differentiates you in the market, you're just going to start competing on price. And when you're competing on price, that's a race to the bottom. And some people are going there mighty fast. And you might be sitting there and saying, oh, why should I listen to your opinion? Well, I'm just telling you how to be different and how to actually get that validation within yourself, knowing that what you're selling is needed in the marketplace. That's the confidence you need. Because then if somebody says, oh, no, I'm sorry, I can't buy today. You know, you don't need to be wasting time on that person. I mean, you need to, um, you know, nurture that lead, etc., etc. But it's wasting time. And you wallowing in trying to change that person's mindset. How are you going to be different? That difference you have in the market, that's the validation you need for your own self. You know? Know that you're the most important 
salesperson or marketer within your business. Nobody else would do a better job. And when you know the answers of why you are different, when you know the answers of why you are needed in the market, and when you know what you actually stand for, I don't think anybody's opinion would mean anything to you. All right? So at the end of the day, it's hard, I know, when you're forced to listen to news and you're told that, uh, you know, the market is going to crash or there's bad news here and there. Just guard what influences you're getting. Make sure you're providing something that is needed in the market. Make sure it's totally different that not anybody else can represent you or you cannot be compared to in the market. That then gives you the confidence to go in the market and even if people cannot afford to pay for your services, you can still fire them. Liz Bokani, Zini say. Hoping you're having a fantastic day with Sydney Go, You know? So that's all I had, guys. And um, obviously, for those of you that are in Australia and you're really, really looking to expand your audience, um, I mean, obviously, Facebook yanked, um, you know, the, 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 the page reach in, 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 the, in the news feed. But don't dismay because the Australian business online directory is yours to use. I think we're sitting on four, four, eight something the last time I checked. Uh, members that are, you know, sitting there and, and they're exchanging ideas, etc., etc., you know? So, yeah, find out if you can be part of this directory and so that you don't have to seek any validation from people because people are not seeing your content, you know? Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, um... I really want you to succeed. And Robert said, that's all? <laughs> that was a great deal. You laid it out. Absolutely. I, I really want that your business is profitable and you enjoy working in it. And I really believe that you have the confidence to pull it through. So if I can be of help, don't hesitate to explore that option. Or anybody else who's watching this video with as well. Phone partnerships. So that you don't go out and seek validation from people that are not going to purchase from you in the first place. I really hope this video was as valuable um, you know, as I thought it was. Because I've been speaking to a lot of entrepreneurs and they're doubting their business model. They're doubting who they are as a person. You know, and then they're afraid that, um, you know, you know they, they, they think you have to look established and big and puff up your chest in order to be seen as somebody in the market. Be you. Validate yourself. Don't seek external validation because at the end of the day, if you do seek external validation, nobody's going to give you anything. Right? You're not entitled to anything in the first place. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget, tomorrow is the Ask and Prosper show. Same time, but longer version where you get to ask me questions and then, um, you know, I will answer them. So make sure you prepare your questions or you can start typing them so that I can answer them as we go along in the hour section tomorrow. All right. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And thank you. Thank you so much.